So you want to learn how to use Flash like a pro? <laughs> You've come to the right place. I put together a list of 10 tips to help you get better at flash photography. I use this list as kind of a roadmap to learning the basics of flash and to get an overview of some important flash concepts. And keep in mind uh, that the flash units that we're talking about today are a speed light type. So they're these small flash units that fit onto the hot shoe of your camera. And um, specifically, we're talking about flash units that are compatible with your specific camera. All right, here we go. Tip number one, know the features of your flash. Now you'd think this is something that everyone should do, but uh, I guarantee you a lot of people don't know uh, even the physical uh, properties of their flash, not in depth anyway. All right, so we'll just go over them, the pieces, the parts of the flash real quick, all right? So this is the flash head, all right? This uh, usually, um, with a decent flash, it's, it swivels and it rotates. And there's a reason for that, and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, along with this, uh, on the flash head, you have uh, this part right here. We'll just hold on with that one. Uh, this right here is a wide angle lens that can fit onto it. So when you're, you're using wide angle lenses on your camera, this uh, basically throw the light uh, out of your flash in, into a wider um, field of view. So along with that, uh, you have, you can tuck the wide angle one back in here and then you have uh, lots of flashes have this uh, little catch light, uh, little tiny bounce card and it's for catch lights. Uh, what this does is it adds a little spark in, uh, in the eyes. Say you're outdoors and you want a little sparkle in the eyes, uh, this will do that for you. Another thing that most of these flashes have is, this, see this little red panel right here? Now what you have behind that red panel, it's uh, slightly uh, transparent. It's got things like sensors, focused assist beams, and things like that. And some of them are big uh, on these style of flashes. And you know, on this uh, Westcott uh, FJ80, two that I have here, you have a battery here, uh, and then you've got a little tiny red panel down here. These flashes also have a place to uh, insert batteries because the flash does need power. These flashes also have uh, ports on them for things like firmware updates, maybe uh, different types of wired sync and other things. These flashes, because they fit on the hot shoe of your camera, also have a foot and some way to secure it to the camera once you slip the foot into the camera's hot shoe. On the back, you have an LCD panel and controls. Uh, this one has a lot more controls than say something like this because this Westcott has a, a touch screen, which is pretty cool and less controls on the outside of the unit. Definitely get familiar with your flash. Uh, use the manual and walk yourself through the menu screens and uh, that'll put you way ahead of the game. All right, tip number two, understand flash sync speed. Now your camera has at least one specific flash sync speed. It might be one 200th of a second, it might be one 250th of a second, it really all depends on the camera. And um, this is the maximum shutter speed that you can use when using flash. Unless you're using high speed sync. That's, there's always an exception, isn't there? Uh, and we're gonna talk about high speed sync in a moment. Now normally your flash is, uh, sync speed is set automatically uh, with certain camera modes. Um, in manual mode, you have to make sure that you're not exceeding the shutter speed when using flash. But again, it, it really depends on the camera because even in manual mode, some cameras will, once you slip your flash on to the camera's hot shoe, it's going to automatically set that shutter speed for you. Tip number three, learn how to use TTL flash metering. TTL flash metering, uh, basically makes flash a lot easier. Uh, flash power is automatically determined by the flash and the camera in this setting. This is great for fast moving situations, uh, run and gun flash photography, uh, whenever you're using on-camera flash. Uh, using it is simple. Uh, all you do is just set your flash to TTL and uh, you can use it with most camera exposure modes, even manual mode. A TTL is great, but for static portrait setups and off-camera flash, you'll get more control and more consistent flash exposures if you use manual flash settings instead. And I'll get to that uh, later down the list. Tip number four, enable high-speed sync. All right, high-speed sync is a flash feature that allows you to use your flash with higher shutter speeds than the camera's normal flash sync speed, which we talked about earlier. 
Now, when would you want to use this? All right, so if you're shooting outdoors and you open up your aperture to get some nice shallow depth of field, you know, that nice blurry background effect, you might need to use a really fast shutter speed so that the ambient light doesn't overexpose the shot. Okay, really wide apertures let in a lot of light. Now, uh, if you want to pop a little fill light onto a subject's face, in other words, use some flash at the same time that you've got these really fast uh, high shutter speeds going, high speed sync will allow you to do that with these high shutter speeds. And because of how camera shutters work at high speeds, a single burst of flash probably wouldn't illuminate the whole frame at one time. So you need a short but continuous flash and that's what high speed sync does. It pulses out flash for a longer duration, which is necessary for the ways exposure happens at higher shutter speeds. Now I would imagine your eyes are kind of glazing over about now, but you could just leave the high speed sync setting on and it'll usually only activate when you go beyond the normal shutter sync speed. So you don't have to worry about it. Your camera and your flash will take care of uh, high speed sync uh, whenever they need to. Uh, just leave that setting on. Tip five, use bounce flash indoors. So if you point your flash head at different angles in a room and not straight ahead at your subject, you'll probably get more flattering, more natural looking light. And that's why uh, the flash heads swivel and rotate. So, so that it'll make this bounce flash technique possible. All right, so try this. You're pointing your camera at your subject, right? But angle your flash head toward a wall to the side of the subject and experiment with bouncing it off of the wall or off of the ceiling or you know even off of the wall behind you. This can give you some really nice uh, bounce light effects and I think you'll like the results. All right, here's a pro tip. This isn't a good idea outdoors, all right? Uh, lots of times outdoors, there's no surface uh, around that the light can bounce and reflect back off of. So there's no point in uh, aiming the flash head in another direction, all right? So if you point the flash head away from your subject, it just keeps going. Tip number six, color correcting gels, all right? You know that you can use uh, these gels for cool color effects, right? But color correcting gels are made specifically for balancing flash and different types of ambient light. These gels are sometimes included with uh, the flash when you purchase it and they come in different colors like CTO is color temperature orange. You've got blue gels and green gels. And so the way this works is uh, if you put a gel over your flash so that the light coming from the flash is more in line with the majority of the other light in the room, the ambient light that's in the scene, uh, then you can white balance your shot for that generalized color. If all light is the same color, white balance is easier to accomplish. So do you have to do this? I usually don't, uh, but it's a good thing to learn how to do and uh, why it works. That'll teach you something about light color and the Kelvin scale, warm light versus cool light. It's a good thing to, to get familiar with. Tip seven, use manual flash mode and manual camera settings. All right, we've already talked about how TTL automatically controls flash output for you, but the thing is it doesn't always get it right. Uh, if you switch your flash over to manual mode, you can control flash output more precisely and consistently. Uh, this is great for portraits and other situations where the distance from the flash to the subject remain fairly constant from shot to shot. This is especially useful when it comes to tip number eight in our list. And here it is, tip number eight, use off-camera flash. All right, this is something you wanna learn. Once you become comfortable controlling your camera mounted on-camera flash, you'll wanna experiment with off-camera flash. Uh, photographers use off-camera flash for more sophisticated and professional photography, it's just a fact. Now of the two flash modes that we have been talking about, I prefer manual flash mode for off-camera flash over TTL, right? Um, now, all of this is a huge topic and something you're eventually uh, gonna want to learn about. Tip number nine, try flash modifiers, all right? Flash modifiers, or lighting modifiers in general, change the look and effect of your light. Flash is a powerful um, but small light source, so it can create images with high contrast. I mean, just think about it. Um, this is a nice powerful light, but look at how small the actual original source is gonna be, right? And what that's gonna do uh, when it hits your subject, just straight on like that, just bare 
bare bulb kind of flash, it's going to give your subject some high contrast and it's going to look harsh. The light's going to look harsh because it's a hard transition from the light areas to the shadow areas. Now, a modifier like a softbox or a shoot through umbrella will effectively increase the size and coverage of your light. And this creates smoother transitions between the light and the shadow areas. So the light won't look as harsh uh, as it would without the modifier. Now, there are really all types of modifiers uh, made to help you get softer light or more focused light or to do light shaping and special effects. Light modifiers come in all shapes and sizes the, and they're uh, made to do all different kinds of things. It's really fun to experiment with them. Something you should do. Tip number 10, our final tip, use multiple flashes, okay? All right, eventually you're gonna want to move past the one light setup, uh, past one flash and use two or three or even more lights uh, to get even finer control over the lighting in your images. Now this is an advanced topic, but I'm gonna give you an idea of what this looks like, okay? Here's a setup featuring uh, the key light. This is your first and your main light. Next is the fill light, and this is a light that you can use to help reduce contrast. Next is your hair or rim light, and this helps define the contours of your subject, sort of the outline of your subject. And photographers like to say how uh, a rim light helps pop the subject uh, from the background, gives them a more three-dimensional look, and that's true. Uh, then you've got your background lights. Uh, these are used to control the appearance of the background. All right, there you go. 10 tips that'll help you on your road to becoming a flash photography expert. Uh, I'm going to put some good links in the video description below so that you can refer to those for more detailed info on each of these topics. All right, guys, I think that's about it. Thanks for hanging out with me today. See you next time.